Well, today is, what is today? Oh, today's Monday, August 26th. And uh, it's almost noon. So this hay, this hay has been drying for about two days now. Yeah, just about two days. I'll go in and check it, see how dry it is. But uh, if they don't bathe it today, they're surely going to bathe it tomorrow. So it's really been drying for two days. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah, I can see it. Looks thicker than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. When I checked it before, before it was cut, I, I, would, I didn't have a high expectation of what I was going, to, what the result was going to be after they cut it. But I'm hoping for at least around 50 bales, give or take. That's what that's what I used to get on the second pen. Pretty good. I can live with it. As long as I get some hay out of it, that's the main thing. Make it worth the worth the cost of cutting and raking and baling. drive in and check the thickest areas for see how dry that is. Oh look at that way down there. Way down there there's a group of vultures. So there must be something big they're eating on down there because it's already been two days. Yeah there's a whole bunch of them down there but I'm not going to go down and find out. Must have been some big animal that died when they cut it. Yeah, they're, they're right down there at the end of this row right here. This, uh, if I can see it, I think it's this one here. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're at the very end of this field here. There's a whole group of, uh, I don't know, what do they call that? There's a name for a group of vultures, I forgot. A group of crows would be a murder of crows. I don't know what a group of uh, I don't know what a group of uh, vultures is called. <laughs> Doesn't really matter. Okay. Yeah, the, I'll, I'll go right in here because this this area here was pretty thick toward the headland. Uh, you know, you could see where the thick area was. So I'm going to go ahead and check that since I'm down here anyway. Let's see if that's dry underneath. Yeah. Let me go back a little bit. Yeah, at least there's something something to bail. That's the main thing. Sometimes when the hay dries, it, it's I know it's dr less after it dries because of the, uh, the less moisture. Okay, that's it. All right, I'm gonna go check the inside of the field now. I'll see how dry the hay is. Yeah, it looks thick right about there. Yeah. That, that row there looks like pretty thick. I'm gonna I'm gonna check that one out. Yeah, this is probably the thickest hay in the field, right through here. Right through here is the thickest of the hay because it had it had a lot more alfalfa in it. So I'm gonna go check over there to if that looks thick compared to the rest. The rest is mostly grass, but there's alfalfa in here. So. 
go check it out. See what it looks like underneath. I know the top's dry, but we'll see. Yeah, feel looks good. I can smell the hay. Oh, I just love the smell of hay drying, curing. Yeah. hay in the field. Too bad there's not much of it. Yeah, it's pretty, it's dry underneath too. They could probably bale it today if they wanted to. But I'm guessing they're going to bale it tomorrow. That's my guess. Because if they were going to bale it today, they'd be out raking by now. They always rake it. You rake it a little early in the morning. Right, right after the dew is off uh, so you don't knock off too many leaves but this is mostly grass so it doesn't matter the leaves aren't the leaves won't get knocked off anyway that's it I'm gonna head back to the house work on something over there this is the neighbor who rents the farm out and he's got some big pipe going from his place here and it goes all the way all the way to the farm down there, I'm way over there, way down there, and the pipe lays along the road, and it ends up in the cornfield that they're working in. And there's the farm. He's got something going over over the road there, uh, and uh, and it, I guess it blows the stuff through the pipe back to his place I'm at the edge of the farm now and I'm not I'm actually on my brother's driveway and there's that pipe going across the across the road or above the road and then there's a pipe going out to that all the way out to the cornfield there it's hard to tell but uh, yeah where that red truck is. So I'm gonna take a closer look. Somehow they're doing something with that cornfield. I guess they cut it for silage and now I guess they had the they piped it. They must have blown it with the machines. They blown it all the way instead of using trucks to haul the silage. They uh, used this machine to uh, and pipes to blow it all the way down there to his farm. Okay wow that's never seen that before yeah you can see the machines way out there yeah past those uh, on the other side of those uh, trees there on the uh, right near the shed uh, yeah. beyond the shed I'll get a closer look well brother said he was going to use it uh, uh, last Saturday but uh, doesn't look like he used it yeah, it's still in the same place I left it. So while I'm here, I'm gonna see what the neighbor's doing in, in the field. That must be the machine that they're using to blow the material back to his place. Why was I wrong about that? It looks like they're using that pipe, that long pipe from his place. We, I'd say it's about a mile down the road. And they're using that to blow manure, liquid manure, or just the manure, yeah, probably from a manure pit. And they, they got the hose connected to that machine there. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And as they... As they drive... I'm going to watch for traffic. As they drive that big machine, which uh, digs the, it digs the, uh, you can see the wet spot here. It applies the manure into the ground somehow. It digs it in. And uh, that orange hose is trailing it. That orange hose, pipe hose, that trails it. I can see some uh, orange hose up there too, on top of the hill. 
So that's how they're applying the manure. Instead of spreading it outright like they usually do, you know, like on top of the ground, they use this machine and, this, and now all that piping material to uh, dig it in more into the ground so it don't smell as much, I guess. I can still smell it, but it's not as bad as it usually is when they spread it on top of the ground. But I, I never minded the, uh, the smell of cow manure. Because uh, my, my, when we had, when my dad raised hogs, oh, I hated the smell of pig manure, though. Yeah, but cow manure, I never had a problem with it. Okay, I guess that's all I'm going to show. Uh, I'm going to get a view from the top when I go up to the corner. So there, there's my, that's my sister-in-law's house there. It's a corner of the farm there. Yeah, this is what they're working on. They're applying manure, applying the manure to this field here, this corn field. They already harvested the corn for uh, silage. You can see the orange pipe out there. Yeah, that's a big machine they used to dig that manure into the ground. Yeah, you can see the you can see the wet spot left when they turned around. I'm gonna keep an eye on traffic. Yeah. Yeah. That's I've never I've never seen it done this way though. Yeah, it's the first time I've ever seen it done this way. Normally they just take a big tanker and spread the manure or a manure spreader. But I guess they got this is a new and improved way. Get it in, get it into the ground. So that's good. That's neat. I gotta get going before I get before the traffic is coming. All right, that's it. And there's the other machine that does the pumping. All right, I'm done here. Gotta go. This is the uh, hay field that my brother's using this year. Yeah. Uh, they had weed on the their neighbor had weed on it. The one that's pumping the manure now. They had weed on it in, in the spring, and then they harvested the wheat. And, oh no! They, yeah, yeah. They harvested the wheat, and then they then they harvested the uh, then they let it grow up. My brother had planted clover in it. Either it did or didn't grow very good. He said it was bad seed, but who knows? Anyway, whatever the reason, they bailed it. They they cut it after the stubble grew out, the grasses and whatever else. Uh, they, and they planted it, or planted. Then they bailed it and put it in this green silage. So I think they they bailed some straw, and they my the straw is over there on the other end. I guess the. Uh, I guess the uh, neighbor who does that manure, I guess he uh, he took some of the straw too, but oh. I wasn't watching traffic. Back at my place. Yeah, that's my boundary. Where that white pole is. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna go head out to the big pasture. Yeah. Next next time I keep the cattle out of here. You can see how things grow up compared to this bottom here. I kept the edge mowed a little bit. Uh, I should have been mowing the whole thing. I should, have, I should have kept them weeds under control. Yeah, I should have kept them weeds under control. There's cattle right here. And over here, see the side of that hill? Yeah, 
it's hardly any weeds there because there's less moisture up there. All the moisture is down in the bottom and that's give the give the weeds lots of uh, water and they'll grow anywhere. Okay, I'm gonna head out to the big pasture. Drive by right here. Yeah. Same thing over here. If I ever move the cows out again next summer, I'm going to uh, I'm going to keep these weeds under control better. Yeah. If not with the lawnmower, then with the uh, then with the with the bush hog. All right, that's about it. Yeah. I sprayed this area, so I don't have to mow it. Yeah. That's where I used to park my trailer. But I, I keep it parked somewhere else now. All right, let's head out to the big pasture. So I'm at the big pasture now, and I can see the cattle are all out there on that end down there. And there's, there's a hiding out there in the other pasture all by itself for some reason. So I'll, uh, I'm gonna get it. Closer look down there. Well, on my way down there, I guess I'll just do a drive by. Yeah, looking pretty good. Fence is back up again. Calorie. Cattle are contained. See, there's a hiding over there under that tree, over, under that pear tree. And there's another hiding. Uh, hard to tell. Hard to tell what they're out here behind the trees. Yeah, keep an eye on the traffic. I got caught once already. Uh, here comes the cattle. Yeah. Fence is looking good, working. Cattle are there. They're spread out. Keep an eye on my traffic. Yeah, there's, there's all the calves and cows in the bull. Okay. They're all there. All right. That's about it. Okay, that's it. There's a calves on there's a calves on the end there. And there's the uh, and there's the corner. Okay, that's it. So uh, since I'm here I'm gonna do some work out in the pasture. Well I'm out the gate now. Cattle are down there on that end, grazing away. I hear traffic coming down the road. Yeah, somebody's coming. Uh, looks like a tractor. Yeah, it's probably the neighbor. Yeah, my neighbor over here. Yeah, neighbor who owns a field across the road. They got a, they got something going on up there in those woods there, and they drive their little tractor there sometimes to mow grass and stuff. Uh, okay, I'm going to head up to the top of the road because I'm going to be uh, collecting some rocks today and spreading it around. But I'm going to try to anyway. Uh, it's another hot day. It's already 90 degrees and it's only around. Uh, I think it's almost 1 o'clock in the afternoon getting, or getting there. Uh, and I, since I'm here, I check both fences, north fence and south fence, and uh, they're both working good. And today I brought seven buckets. Yeah, I'm gonna need more than seven, but uh, I'm gonna start with seven. Uh, yeah, and I'm gonna be filling them up. They're empty now. Fill them up and uh, move them and dump them where I need them. I need some rock. Yeah, I was going to wait for a cooler day, but 
Uh, won't be long, we'll be hauling bales up here again from that, from that cutting that was just made in the hay field after it's baled. And uh, uh, I want to be, have the road ready. In the first place, I'm going to spread some rock is right through here because when it's wet, when the water comes down here, this gets real spongy, real wet. So I'm going to put a little rock here on this side. The other side's pretty dry, so I'm going to leave that alone. But it, all the water runs down to this area here and gets real soggy. And then uh, over there where that dead area is, I'm going to put some in there too. I'm putting it here because this area here is de developing a trench. Yeah, when the water flows. Water flows here and it goes that way and then you know, I sprayed it so I can see it better. Yeah. Uh, what I wanted to do is put some kind of a log through here and then put some rock on, uh, on top of it here. But uh, for now I'm just going to uh, put some rock in that trench and maybe just scatter some rock here just to slow the water down or slow the erosion down. For now anyway, uh, I'll fix it up better later. Getting the important areas done first. I'm out of breath. Shoveling that rock. <coughs> I put a little rock here. Yeah, just a little bit. That's hard. And I filled up two buckets. I'm gonna put it over there. So let's do that. I gotta catch my breath first. Boy, oh, them buckets rock are heavy. But I got I got this part done. Uh, uh, this is the soft spot, so I so I did that. The other is pretty solid, and then I put a, some rock there to slow the erosion. Uh, I, think, I think it's too hot to be doing this work, so I'm just going to fill up a few buckets and. Head down to the other end of the road. Oh, it's too hot out here. Oh, I've got two more buckets, and that's all I'm gonna do today. I'll drop them off at the near the road. Okay, let's go. And then I'm gonna maybe I'll do it again tomorrow. But I got to come out earlier before it gets hot. Oh, this heat is just taking the energy right out of me. But I got enough to do. To dump them two buckets off near the road. Uh, so let's get that done. Go home. Cool off. Well, that gate's hot too. Whew. Burnt my hands. Forgot to wear gloves. Oh, I guess the cattle came out to this pasture now. I'm standing in the shade, so I'm cooling off a little bit. I left the truck in the sun, though. But it's got air con, so it's not no problem. There's a couple. Yeah, those two are hanging around by the by the oiler. See, uh, the two-year-old white heifer. She chased her little brother back. <laughs> he was ready to go through and she now she's got the oiler on her back. Yeah, she likes that too. Uh, I know he does. That's why. She, for some reason she, she's like she's every she's like every big sister. She has to pick on her little brother. Uh, come on, let him through. Uh, come on. That's it. You had enough. All right, okay, little bully, come on through. That's it. Come on, big sister, get out of the way. Yeah, they're eating now. There, there she goes. I guess she gave up. There he come. There he goes. He went through. Ah, now they're out here now. I guess that's all of them. Yeah, I see the. Three new white calves, or white calves, three new calves, the white one, the bigger white one, uh, and there's a smaller one behind him, and then there's, okay, that's a cow and the calf over there, over there, 
uh, that's the, the calf born in uh, April 16, and that she was a, his mama was a first calf ever, and then the, and the, the cow in front of there, uh, her calf's right next to her somewhere, but I don't see it right now. That, that was the last calf born. And then the the cow there, I can point to her, uh, there I think, that's the mama of this white calf, white bull calf, born on May, March 28th. And then he, uh, he was, uh, 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 he was the, he was the fifth calf of that cow. And then you can see the little calf behind the white one, between that white, that white little bull and the, and the bigger mama. Yeah, you can see them good now. The calf behind that cow, uh, behind the bull. Yeah, that, that's uh, her calf from, her third calf from July, no, June. June 2, June 2, not July, June 2. So that calf is about a month younger than that white one. Yeah. But that white one is growing real good. That's real good. All right. And that calf there is about two weeks between them. Yeah. The white one was first, then that one, and then that, that little other one there. Okay, that's enough for the cows. Let's head to the road and dump off these two buckets and go home. So I can cool off more. Okay, so you just can't get enough of watching my cattle. Yeah. There's a bully. And the other highlands are over there. Okay. Yeah, the highlands are on the... Well, they're in front of the bull. <laughs> One, two, three. And then uh, the other ones are over here. Okay, let's go home. Well, I'm ready to close that gate by the bridge. Oh, I'm lightheaded. Oh. Feels like I'm gonna faint. Oh, so hot. It's hot, very hot in the sun. But in the shade, I got a little. It's a little cooler in the shade. And there's a little breeze blowing, but a lot blowing. Not much, but a little one. It feels good with my sweat. I mowed this the other day. It looks a lot cleaner now. I should have. I should have mowed it all the way up to this yellow pole, because that's where we make our turn. Yeah, maybe I'll come back here and clean that up a little bit more. Let's see. No hurry. I can still make the turn. But when you get a cattle trader, cattle trader, a, a hay trader, yeah, you need more room to turn. But they can still drive on the grass, the, the tall grass. Okay, I'll dump these two buckets off at the road and I'll be done out here for today. Uh, it's too hot to do anymore. At least it's too hot for me. Uh, you can see where my tracks went. So I don't need that much room to turn a trip hook. But when I got a trailer hooked to it, then uh, I'll need more room to turn here. To straighten it out so we don't hit that corner pole there. Okay, let's go. Uh, that's where I'm going to put these two buckets. I need more than two, but this is just to start with. This is always, when it rains, that's always a couple of mud puddles there. When I put rock here last year, I didn't go that far. I just started to here and went this way. Uh, but I didn't get far enough back. Uh, then it developed mud puddles when it rains. and They just kept getting bigger, deeper and deeper. So. I'm going to add these first two buckets and uh, I'll get some more later on. Okay, let's get this done. Uh, I'm getting hot. Even the cool breeze ain't helping much. I mean, it feels good and I am cooling off, but not enough. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, I'll probably need a couple more buckets to help level it off. That's pretty good for now, though. I'll know more. I'll know more what it looks like after it rains. <sighs> and that rock gets pressed in to the mud. Okay, let's go home. That's what it looks like without the truck in the way. 
I think we had it about an inch of rain or more about a week ago, but sure it's dry now. I think that even the creek is drying up. I don't think the creek is flowing much now anyway. Yeah, so after we get this hay baled, I hope it rains. Oh, that's a start. I want to put some more rock there in those two tracks down there, and then I want to put some more rocks on uh, either side of that gate over there. And I uh, got a little bit more rock to put on the bridge, or on this side of the bridge, and on the other side of the bridge too, where, where the where the tires drive to make it smoother. So I got some more work to do, but not today. I get the rock when it's cooler. Okay, there's the cattle way out there, He's grazing way out there now. I guess he got tired of this one, and. Uh, this uh, fence line looks good too. All right, let's go back to the house. Oh, I'm back at the house. It's about 1:30 p.m. Uh, I'm gonna go in and cool off and clean up. Yeah, I need to refresh myself with some air con and some food and water too. All right, catch you on the next one. Bye. Hello, maybe I. I was going to, yeah, I'll just wait till tomorrow. I was going to go check the hay field again, but uh, if they were going to rake it, they would have raked it this morning, I think. Yeah, because it's hay's too dry to rake now. All right, I'll catch you tomorrow. Or I'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Because I think they're going to bail tomorrow. 93 at uh, 1.40 p.m. Yeah, it's hot. And I'm done. Yeah, it's about 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Now it's 4 p.m. So it's still hot. Well, there's that manure pumper machine that they were using today out up there. And over here, too. Looks like they did this field, too. I think. Yeah, I think they did. Looks like it. Anyway. They, it looks like they uh, removed all the pipe though. Yeah, it's about 5:30 p.m. They moved all the pipe that was down there, and the thing that was crossing the road, uh, going over the road. Well, it's still uh, Monday, August 26. It's around 5:30 p.m. And I just came back to see if they may have bailed it, but they didn't. So, yeah. I'm pretty sure they'll bail it tomorrow though. I'll, I'll come back, uh, I'll come over here sometime in the mid morning, see if they rake it. Yeah, cause if they're gonna rake it, they should rake it sometime in the morning. Right after the dew's off on top. And then they'll rake it and they'll bail it in the afternoon. That's my guess. Uh, I'm eager to see how many bales it'll make. Then I'll have to make arrangements with my brother or schedule something with my brother to have have the uh, a moved the bales moved to my place with his big machines. All right, that's it for now. Catch you later, or catch you on the next one. Bye. Well, that's uh. 5.50 p.m. on Monday, August 26, 2024, and I'm done for today. I'll be uh, expecting them to bail the, uh, rake and bale the hay tomorrow. That's my guess. Uh, the hay's, I think the hay was dry enough today, but uh, I guess they had other things to do. And they want to make sure it's dry. Okay, I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.